This episode of the Old Dogs REI Network is brought to you by Mino Studio. Welcome to the Old Dogs REI Network, where cash flow is king. Real estate investing, the means, so you can enjoy your retirement dreams. This is the show where we cut right to the chase. No sales pitch, no long monologues, just simple how-to real estate investing advice. So you can earn the passive income you need to enjoy your retirement today. And now, your host and chief old dog, Bill Manasero. Old dogs, and welcome to Fun Facts Friday. This is our once a week, only on Friday show, where we have special episodes not featuring guests, where I will share tricks, tips, terminology, and techniques that will help skyrocket you to real estate investing success. Today's topic is when a tenant dies. But before we get started, I uh, just want to touch base with you guys again and uh, see how you're doing this week. Uh, hopefully, you guys are uh, moving forward. Man, oh man, it's still a seller's market out there. There's crazy bidding wars going on, and uh, a lot of institutional players are getting in on it. It's it's a frenzy out there. Um, for those of you that are buying or selling property, great time to sell. I've been selling off my smaller properties and uh, getting great, great prices. So uh, uh, if you do have some, this is a good time to, to let, let uh, those properties go. And if you're really looking for some good prices out there. Anyway, uh, let's get on to our tip of the week here. Rentometer, or some people call it rentometer. It just depends on <laughs> who it is that's making. I think the company would say rentometer, but hey, great company you may already know about them that's cool if not um, this is one of my favorite resources um, it's the fastest and easiest way to compare rents um, of properties anywhere in the u.s Rentometer uses advanced technology and data management tools to provide a thorough rent comparison and analysis within seconds for any address in the U.S. Uh, Rentometer also offers premium subscription services, which I really recommend. They're really inexpensive for a year uh, subscription. Uh, and it's going to give you a lot more detailed information. I mean, I love it because I can put in an address. Now I can look at my existing properties. I can check and see if my rents are within market. Yeah, the premium service is uh, really a, a, a good route to go because uh, you can get a lot more detailed information. I like to go to the actual addresses. Like you'll plug in your address and it'll have on a, on a map, it'll show it. And then it'll show the rents of places nearby you. And then you can click on those rents with the premium service and it allows you to uh, you know, assess that particular property and see how well it compares to yours and whether or not it's a, you know, comparable. Because sometimes you just put in, let's say, a one bedroom, one bath, and uh, you may look that this is a full house as opposed to a half of a duplex or even an apartment. So it's a good idea to, um, you know, to, I think to get the subscri subscription service. If you're if you're shopping properties, of course, it's great to be able to see if you're buying a property whose rents are under market. That's obviously a good value add play. So you want to uh, try to find those kinds of properties. So Rentometer, uh, there'll be a link in the show notes, and you'll be able to uh, click on that. Uh, they're a partner with us, so we really like to support them. Um, okay, well, let's move on to our topic. This is unfortunately it's a it's a, a somber topic. Um, I recently encountered uh, just a whole, just uh, it seemed like a wave to me of um, tenant deaths. And it is, uh, it can be really shocking. Um, uh, first off, uh, about a year and a half ago in this one apartment, one of the roommates in there uh, passed away um, in a suicide, which is um, not a not a pleasant thing by any means. Um, it was pretty traumatic for, you know, just us and the people in the building and so forth. Um, and then a year and a half later, the other uh, remaining roommate uh, passed away. It was not a suicide. Uh, it was just a heart attack, uh, but not just a heart attack. It was a heart attack, and uh, he was still a young man, so it was pretty uh, pretty sad. Um, 
but uh, you know when that happens uh, and then not even two weeks after that i get a call that another tenant had passed away now not in their apartment this is somebody that had a history of uh, some uh, problems some medical problems and actually passed away in the hospital but we got notified and it was just like boom 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 it really uh, pretty traumatic when that happens um, but i think it's important to mention this if you have properties and you have tenants this can happen um, hopefully you never have to deal with it and um, you know with the with the death of a, a renter or, or a tenant but if you do there are certain steps that you should be aware of and so i'm just going to outline those it's uh, uh it's really wise to make sure you do things legally and uh the right way now there are local there are state and local laws that you should become familiar with but i'm going to give you more general information and then you can uh, follow up with um, finding out specifically what's uh needed for your particular area. There are essential steps that a landlord must follow to be protected both legally and financially. Now, while laws may vary from state to state, you should always check your local and state laws in the unfortunate event that you are presented with a tenant death. This uh, podcast outlines uh, certain guidelines that you need to take in order to comply with the law. And uh, I will say my disclaimer here just right up front that uh, I am uh, not an attorney, okay, and uh, neither is Old Dogs REI Network. We don't provide legal advice. This material has been prepared for informational purposes only. All listeners are advised to check all applicable local, state, and federal laws and consult legal counsel um, should questions arise, okay? So let me get into it. Uh, There are basically five key steps that you need to take. And uh, the first one is um, as soon as it happens. Now, with our particular situation, um, the uh, gentleman that just uh, recently passed away in his unit, uh, there was uh, another tenant that was a friend of his uh, who was ill, so hadn't talked to him in a while because she had uh, medical issues and so um, she was confined to her room but she noticed that he wasn't um, you know coming and going she could usually hear him coming up the stairs and he was uh, uh, sort of overweight and I think that was part of the reason of his heart issues but he uh, you know she could hear him coming up the stairs he'd be breathing heavy and um, she noticed when she went to get her mail that uh, he had a lot of backed up mail in his box and so she contacted uh, us and at that point we uh, you know had had someone from our property management to knock on the door and uh, see if uh, there was anybody there Um, there was no answer um, but the the door was locked and so uh, we figured at this point that there may be an issue um so we contacted the police the police came and um they uh said that they they couldn't go in without authorization so we um basically uh, you know were able to let them in and sure enough the uh, tenant was inside the the room and had passed away um so uh the most important thing you know especially if it's you know somebody that passes away there and you you're the one to discover it you know not a family member um is that you notify the police that, and uh, so the coroner came um inspected the room looked for any kind of if there's indications of you know, possibility of uh, homicide or anything of that nature. Uh, the all the all the clues in the room basically led to the fact that it was a heart attack. He had a meal he had just picked up, uh, put it on the counter, hadn't even opened it yet, and uh, and then fell back on his bed and passed away. So that was um, um, the indication was that yeah, he had a heart attack at that point. Uh, now, the m- most important first step, uh, of course, if you do, you're the one to discover it, then you do need to call the police. The most important f- step after that is getting a written notification of the death. Um, a landlord will usually find out one of two ways, you know, sometimes it'll be from a family member um, or uh, maybe an ex- executor of the, the tenant's estate. Uh, this is 
um, this written notification is essential to legally begin the process of ending the lease, lawfully removing the tenant's possessions, and preparing the property for the next renter. If the landlord is the one who discovers the death, immediately call the police, which we did, as well as the emergency contact listed by the tenant. Uh, secure the rental and do not move anything or take anything from the unit. Okay, uh, it's real important that to once uh, if the police came like they did and to remove the body, then we had to secure it and lock it up and make sure that nobody could get in there. Um, then you wait for authorities. Um, and the uh, you know, uh, in our case, they came in the emergency um, um, personnel to be able to, to remove the the bodies, the body, and uh, um, and then uh, it's important to check with your local and state laws regarding this kind of an event and be prepared to, ahead of time if the occasion should arise. So you should know what your local laws are. And in different states, if you have properties in multiple states, you need to check with those individual states and local municipalities. If you obtain this written notification. If you can't obtain this uh, information, this uh, written notice, uh, then um, from the next of kin, you may have to go actually get a court order to obtain the information. So um, now we had the coroner who, uh, coroner who, who provided us with that uh, data right up front, so we got it pretty quickly. But um, in the case where you're being notified, um, you still need to get that information. The next thing, of course, I mentioned to secure the property, that's key. After the landlord has received written notification, the next step is to secure the property, lock all the windows and doors to avoid any theft. If they lived alone, the landlord may want to consider changing the locks to avoid people entering uh, the property without prior knowledge. Once the next of kin or executor of the estate has officially been handed over the keys, the landlord is not responsible for securing the tenant's belongings. If there is no next of kin or a state executor, follow your local and state laws regarding abandoned tenant property. Okay, then the next part is to prepare... Uh, for the next tenancy. Uh, you basically have to get the place ready for a tenant. The next step is uh, you know, taking a look at the lease. Okay, what do you do if you have a lease and the tenant passes away? Now, to, to legally and lawfully move on, the landlord will need to end or transition the lease. When dealing with the next of kin or state executor, be sure to have compassion for their situation while respectively and lawfully working to regain the property. Here are two common lease situations you might have to f face. For example, if it's a month-to-month -month lease, uh, the tenant's death will act as the 30-day notice. Uh, notify the next of kin or executor of the date that the lease will end and coordinate with them regarding removing possessions, cleaning, transitioning the property, and all the deadlines. If it's a long-term lease, like it was in our case, if the deceased tenant had a long-term lease, the lease does not end automatically when the tenant passes. Okay, it's important to know. The lease will transition to the next of kin or the state the estate executor. In most cases, the next of kin executor will want to end the lease. It is advisable to work with them to end the lease and let them know that you will treat the death as a broken lease agreement and that they, the next of kin or estate executor is responsible for the full rent amount until the rent the unit is re-rented. Now, I think, you know, especially dealing with the grief that the person has to deal with, um, yeah, I mean, you legally could say that they need to pay the remaining amount. Um, but, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I have a hard time with that. Um, I, I, I just worked directly with the next of kin and a uh, very, very nice lady and uh, the sister of the deceased. And um, and I just, you know, basically said, look, you know, we're going to we'll use the security deposit to clean the room and, uh, you know, get it ready for the next tenant. But um, I'm not going to say you have to pay the rest of the lease. And so that's what I would do. And that's what I'd recommend. OK, but then there's the issue of what to do with the tenant's belongings. Um, a landlord cannot remove the belongings of the deceased tenant. They will need to work with the family or executor to coordinate getting them removed and work with them. Set t uh, Timelines, deadlines. We had uh, the sister flew in from out of town and she came in and, and she basically didn't want any of the things except the memorabilia. Um, if there was any paperwork there, um, you know, that uh, she might have to deal with, whether it was uh, bank accounts or what have you, um, and paperwork. 
pictures and anything of a personal nature. She didn't want the clothing, didn't want the furniture, said, you know, you guys can do whatever you'd like with that. So uh, it's going to be different in everybody's situation. But uh, the main idea is, you know, you get it signed off that um, that it's okay to take that and, you know, just throw it away if necessary or, um, you know, do, do with it whatever we will. So that's an, an important part of it. If there isn't a next of kin, then you have to follow your local and state laws regarding abandoned tenant property. You may be required to hold it for a certain amount of time and then sell it at auction and return the money to the estate. So there's, you know, there's different ways to handle those things. You know, that usually goes pretty quickly with the next of kin deciding what they want. And in most cases, uh, also with the other person that passed away shortly after, uh, she really didn't want any of the furniture. She was just looking for pictures and things to remember him by. So they uh, should, though, assign what's called a release to the rights of possession. Uh, once the property is cleaned, uh, cleared and cleaned to your satisfaction, um, ask the next of kin to sign a release to the rights of possession form. Once that's completed, um, then you're in pretty good shape at that point to go ahead and re-rent the property. But you want them to sign off on it that, okay, they've received what they have, they're satisfied, and and that uh, property that can then be rented out. Now, what do you do with the security deposit if the tenant passes away? And I, I kind of touched on that a little bit before, but the security deposit may be used for unpaid rent, wear and tear beyond the normal amount, and cleaning fees. Um, sometimes, especially if the tenant um, dies in the property, uh, you may need special cleanup, you know, a special sanitation type of cleanup. And we did have uh, that, um, but the coroner's office provided that, so that worked out for us. Um, but, um, you you know, you need to be able to cover those costs so that it's understood that the security deposit may be used for those. Be sure, though, to make an itemized list of all deductions and give that to the next of kin or state executor if there isn't a remainder uh, is given back, um, that they'll have a breakdown of what the costs you had incurred as a, a result of getting it back to a rentable condition. You know, dealing with a tenant passing is never an ideal situation. Your top priority as a landlord is to make sure you are protected legally by following all local and state laws regarding a tenant's debt. Uh, this can help ease the financial impacts as well as allowing you to find a new tenant as quickly as possible. If there are next of kin, uh, be as compassionate as you can. You know, work with the family members to remove belongings and, and get the rental returned to a place where it can be lawfully turned back over to uh, for rental. So when you're ready to find a new tenant, you know, be sure to complete um a thorough a tenant screening, of course, you know, and find a, a new tenant. Um, just a quick, you know, FAQ here. Uh, what's the first thing to do if a tenant passes away? Number one, get that written notification of tenant's death. Really important. Does a tenant's death void the lease agreement? Um, no, it uh, does not. Um, but you have the flexibility to be able to to work with that, you know, legally you could ask for uh, the remainder of the lease amount, but I, I just don't know anybody that would do that. <laughs> I don't think that that's necessary. Um, as long as you can get it cleaned up and rent it out, you know, in a reasonable amount of time, I don't think that's going to be an issue. Um, what should you do with the tenant's belongings? We talked about that, um, that you can't remove the belongings without first working with the next of kin or the estate executor. That's an important factor. Um, uh, and then I mentioned the security lease. Yes, you can use that lease uh, to cover um, any expenses that are uh, necessary to get it uh, rentable and uh, you know to reasonably clean it up. Well, that's it uh, for today. I know this is not the, the most uh, joyous topic today, but um, you know I, I think having a, a tenant die uh, mid mid lease or any time you know can be a tragic experience and overwhelming sometimes. Um, if that happens, be sure you know you go through the proper motions for both your sake as well as that of the tenant's loved ones. But you know, be sensitive to them. You know, we we went out of our way to really try to um, help her, um, you know, deal with the the um, the passing. In both cases, there was uh, the sister of um, the gentleman that uh, they both were sisters of 
of the deceased. So um, we just tried to um, be as sensitive as we could to pull those things that were uh, of, of a special special value and uh, put those things aside for them so that they could um, it'd be easier for them. They didn't we didn't want them to have to dig through their laundry and all this other stuff. Um, but uh, we got their permission, of course, before we touched any of their things. So, um, but. Um, yeah, it's you know it's something that uh, you don't want to have to deal with, um, but at the same time um, you do need to be prepared just to make sure that you're doing everything legally and in respect for the family. Well, that is it for today. Uh, please note everything I mentioned will be outlined in detail in our show notes, and you're going to look for the episode entitled "When a Tenant Dies." So until next time, remember cash flow is king and real estate investing the means. Until next time. Keep moving forward and may God bless. Thank you very much for visiting the Old Dogs REI Network. We would greatly appreciate if you would stop by iTunes and let us know what you think of the show. We would love if you could subscribe to the podcast, give us a five-star rating, and write a review. The more ratings and reviews we receive, the more visible the podcast will be to others. Thank you.